Today, I want to tackle the technical elements of a really good hip thrust. It was a significant part of the ultimate booty building program video that I did a few weeks back. So I wanted to revisit it for all the people who are out there and doing this exercise, but not really sure what this form should look like or who are out there and feel like they're sure what the form should look like. But once they see this video, we'll realize that they have some areas that they can improve on. So let's dive into the technique. The hip thrust is a fantastic way to work the glutes maximally. And as such, is a great exercise for those who wanna build up their bum. That being said, it's important to keep in mind that this exercise does not replace many, if any, exercises, like the back squat or the deadlift. These exercises have a whole other purpose and make use of other muscle groups and have challenging elements the hip thrust simply does not. This is just a tool in the belt, not the whole damn toolbox. With that said, let's break down the form. First and foremost, we'll be turning the feet out at about a 45 degree angle. This is because the current scientific literature on this subject shows higher rate of activation for this position than for the feet forward. In terms of spacing between your feet, you want to be about shoulder width apart. With the weight placed over your hips, you'll push the hips up until you have a flat table-like surface from your knees to your shoulders. If you can't reach this position, I'd consider this an incomplete rep, which would indicate you're either not fully ready for that weight too tired to continue the set, or maybe we have some other issue in the pelvic region that we need to correct. Regardless, it would be time to stop there if, even with cueing, you couldn't get to that position. Your feet should be far out enough that at the top of your motion, you should have pretty damn close to, if not exactly a 90 degree right angle bend in the knees. If it's less, your feet are too far in. If it's much more, too far out. As for range of motion, you should only be moving about 30 to 40 degrees of movement in the shin and the hip. This will help ensure full activation of the glutes and confirm proper position of the feet as well. Your shoulder blades should be just barely on the elevated surface that your back is resting on. If you have too much of your back on the surface or too little, your ability to properly do the exercise would be very severely compromised. I usually tell clients to push more through the heels when doing this exercise. That's because the vast majority of people, likely you included, have a tendency to put a lot of pressure in their toes as they push. This is something I see in most leg exercises, not just the hip thrust. The idea with my overcorrection, and that's what it is, an overcorrection, is not to get them to fully adhere to my cue, but to attempt to perform it have it clash with their natural inclination to push through the toes, leading to a more balanced push through the whole foot. Sometimes this backfires if they have amazing proprioception, but those cases are rare, and I'll simply correct that in the moment. For the time being, I suggest you try to do this while focusing on pushing through the heel, as this should help you really engage the glutes, though doing this exercise properly will activate them whether you like it or not. Usually, when I see someone doing this exercise wrong, the most common mistake is range of motion. They usually stop short of full extension, leading to suboptimal use of the glutes. Either that, or they end up not letting their hips sink low enough. This is usually so they can cheat the system and do more weight and ego lift. Believe me when I say this, leave your ego at the door to the gym. It's the heaviest thing you could possibly lift and offers only the shortest path to getting yourself hurt. You'll also always be blown out of the water in terms of strength, size, and aesthetic development by the person willing to lower the weight and do it right. I also often see people with their feet way too far forward. Again, a great way to cheat the lift and do more weight. This also doesn't stand to benefit you in the long run. Take the time to do it right and it will pay off tenfold. That much I can promise you. That just about does it for this video. Do you have a favorite glute exercise? If so, comment below, let me know. And if you have any suggestions for an exercise to tackle the next time I do a technique tube, be sure to throw it into the comments and let me know, and I'll make sure to add it to the list. As a final note, I've made a bit of a decision when it comes to the booty building Google Sheet guide that I made that's worth over $500. If you comment on the booty building video that I linked in the card above, and you send me a DM with your email address so I can add you to the actual Google Sheet, 
I'll give it to you for free. But that only lasts until December 24th, 2021. After that, I'm locking it. I'm thinking of giving people access to it if they become a Patreon member or something like that. The cost will be low, like five bucks a month, but it's not going to be free, not forever. So get it while the getting's good. If you've already commented on the video, but you want access to the Google Sheet and you don't have it yet, just send me an email or a DM or something so that I can get your email address and then I'll add you to it. You have some time left, but the clock is ticking. And finally, stay shining. Because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace. Peace.